Hey everyone, I'm Michael, the Developer Advocate Lead here at Xano, and today I'm super excited to talk to you about our brand new Google Cloud Storage functions. These allow you to interact with and manage your Google Cloud Storage buckets directly in your Xano function stack. Now, technically you've always been able to do this, but you've had to create those external API requests to Google yourself, set up that logic. We've made it super seamless and super easy to do that. I'll walk through uh, some examples uh, of how to leverage those functions. But why is this so important? Well, leveraging a cloud storage solution like Google Cloud really gives you advanced and granular control over all of your storage needs. So for example, if you care about sending a file as a signed URL that maybe has an expiration for security reasons, or you just have a media or file intensive application, or you just wanna pay directly the uh, cloud storage solution for you know, how much you're actually storing in there, well, this solution I think you're gonna love. There's going to be a lot of use cases just unlocked by these new functions. So let's go ahead and dive into what they are and I'll talk through how to actually use them. All right, so into Xano now, let's go ahead and look at how to get these functions in our function stack. So I'm gonna go to add a new function. You can see we have this new cloud storage category and right now there's just Google Cloud Storage, but more to come. So we, when we click in Google Cloud Storage, you can see that we have these five different functions. We can list bucket contents, uh, which is list directory function, generate a signed URL, upload and delete file, and then also create variable from a file resource. So let's quickly go through all those. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with upload file. That seems uh, to make the most sense to a lot of people, right? We're just uploading a file into that bucket. So we open this up. You'll notice there's a few things here when we're mapping up our function. There's service account, the name of the bucket, and the file path, and then file resource, right? But service account. So we actually need a Google service account in order to interact with our Google Cloud Storage bucket. So over my Google Cloud console, if you go to um, your IAM and admin options, you can actually create a Google service account. So I'm just gonna call this, we'll just call this Michael example here and I'm gonna create and continue. And then we actually need to specify three roles. First one being storage object admin, service account user, and finally, storage admin. Great, so we've defined our three roles. This is also available in our documentation. We can hit continue. And then finally done to create our service account. When I do that, one more thing we need to do, we need to actually get the JSON key for our Google service account. So if we go to actions, and manage keys, and then add key, create new key, and we can uh, do the recommended JSON key. When I hit create, Google will actually provide me a downloadable JSON. And for me, it opens in my Firefox browser. I'm just gonna copy this entire key. And let's come back to Xano. And of course, I could simply just paste that in right here or create a variable like this. Let's say create variable. And if I were to paste that in, notice how Xano detects its JSON and wants to import this. We actually wanna store this as text. So I'm just gonna hit close and it should look like this and make sure that a gray text data type indicator is still there. And I might just call this service account for now. We could save this and I could drag this up, right? And now when I go to map this, I could just simply map this. However, we also wanna be able to access this in any function stack most likely. So I actually recommend we store this as an environment variable. So if we go to settings, add variable, and I can call this service account key, and I paste that in. Remember, once again, it's asked me to import. I don't need to do that. And we can simply just save this. So now when we go back, and if I'm any in any function stack using one of these functions, I can actually access that right here in my environment variables. So I don't actually need to create a new variable every time I wanna interact with my Google Cloud Storage bucket. So next we actually need uh, a bucket name, and mine so happens just to be called Michael Zeno one and then a file path. So file path is where we wanna put uh, this actual file. So if we actually jump over to my bucket here, you can see I've created a test folder, right? And so in here, if I wanted to store this new file in there, I would need to go ahead and say uh, slash test slash whatever I want the file path to be, right? So you can see in here, I have one image, goldengate.js, 
jpg so that path is test slash golden gate dot jpg so now if i come back to xeno let's go ahead here we'll say test for the folder and i could go i could just say maybe a uh, new file one two three and then a file resource so we actually need a file resource so i'm going to add that as an import here or an input here excuse me go to storage file resource and we'll simply call this file and when i map this up that will enable us to actually upload a file to our Google Cloud Storage bucket. Great, so let's actually run this, and I'm gonna pick a file. Great, so I picked this picture of the pyramids in Egypt. If I go ahead and run this, we should see a successful response. And over into my Google Cloud Storage bu bucket and into test, and there is my new file 123 that's been successfully uploaded uh, at that path. So now that we've uploaded something, let's actually go about deleting something, right? So let's delete that new file we just created. So if I go back into cloud storage and go to delete file, well, we know service account, I can map up. We know bucket is going to be Michael Zeno one. And then our file path, right? That will be test.newfile123, the file we just created and hit save. And let's go ahead and reset this. I'm not actually using the file resource in this case. Um, so just ignore that input there, but I'm just running this function basically. So when I run this, we see our successful result. Let's come back into my storage bucket. We'll probably just need to give this a little refresh. And there you can see that the file has now been actually removed. So that is uploading and deleting files. So let's go ahead and actually see what's next. So if we go back to cloud storage, there is list directory. So this lists the bucket contents, right? So this is, you know, some uh, more information about the bucket at a specific file path that we might want to access. So let's go ahead and map this up here. So once again, we're working in my Michael Zeno one bucket. And for the path here, let's go ahead and see what happens if we just do test, right? That should essentially be the contents of that test folder. Let's save that and let's make sure to return this. And you know, I'm going to remove this file resource input just to not have any confusion here. So let's go ahead and do the list directory function. And so now you can see I get a whole bunch of information, right? So I get the actual ID of the object, the bucket, storage class, what kind of MD5 hash, Whole lot of information media link to what's nested in there right so if i even wanted to take this you know path further right remember we're just basically drilling into uh whatever paths are accessible within our bucket so let's actually run this for the image contained in that test folder and there you go so you can see this response looks this a little bit similar because we were looking at that nested folder right there but you can see the uh, folder is now a little bit smaller so that's listing directory. It just lists the contents of the bucket in case there's information in there in that metadata that you want to actually use. So let's hide this and let's go ahead and go to the next cloud storage function, which is signed URL. So signed URL is super useful if you need to send secure files or things that uh, maybe have a limited duration, right? So let's go ahead and open this one up. So just like the other ones we've seen so far, we're mapping up our service account our bucket, also our file path. So for example, this might be actually, we'll say test in the actual, an actual file here. So further than an actual folder, um, this gives us a method, right? It's get or post. So in this case, we're just getting an image and then a TTL. So time to live in seconds. So how long do you want this URL to be good for, right? So after, 300 seconds, this would actually expire and would no longer be a valid URL. So no one would be able to access the file at that URL anymore. So let's go ahead and save this. And if I run this, we should see a signed URL like this. Okay, so let's actually go to this and we should be able to see a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. And there you go. So after 300 seconds, this link will no longer be valid and I won't be able to view this image. So signed URL, super handy tool for sending secure files. 
uh, to people for you know a limited amount of time. So that time to live once again is in seconds, fully customizable there. Um, so a really great function to have. And last but not least here, if we go into cloud storage one more time, we have create var from file resource. So this one's pretty cool because it allows us to work with file resources from our Google cloud storage bucket in our Xano function stack. Why would we want to do that? Well, maybe we want to send that to another service. Maybe we want to store that in another database somewhere, right? So this allows us to actually do that, which is very, very handy actually. So let's define everything one more time. In our file path here, let's go ahead and say, test golden gate JPG, and let's go ahead and return this. So if I run this now, so we should see our file resource. You can see there is uh, the name of it, the size of it, the MIME type, and the actual raw image, right? This, that's what's nested here in data. So this is what would be super uh, useful to use, for example, if you actually want to send this to another external service, you would wanna actually use uh, this uh, data field, which contains the raw image. Now, another really cool thing too, is we can make this endpoint URL actually redirect directly to this image. And let me show you how you can do that. So what I wanna do here is because we have the MIME type, we actually wanna define that as a custom header. So I'm gonna go into utility functions, HTTP header, and we'll go ahead here and say, content type, and I'm going to do a, I'm gonna say mime here. And what I'll do here is I will actually do a replace. I'm gonna search for capital mime here. And the replacement will be var1 dot, and that needs to be an underscore mime. So all I'm doing here is variable text substitution. So Xano is going to look for var one dot mime, which is this image slash JPEG and replace that here. Great, so once that's set, we just need to change our response here to be var1.data. So let's go ahead and save that. And now I'm simply going to publish this and let's copy this endpoint URL and actually go to it. And we should see when I do that, we get our actual image here. So what's cool about that create var from file resources, we can actually make our endpoint redirect to it by defend, defining that content type, which is a pretty cool use case. Or we can take that raw, that raw image nested in data and maybe send, send it to an external service or API, or even store it in a database somewhere. A whole lot of options, but it's really cool that we can actually take files from a cloud storage bucket such as Google and then work with them in our Xeno function stack to do whatever we want. So there you have it, just a quick recap. We needed to create a Google service account, uh, set those few permissions. Um, of course, you'll need a Google Cloud Storage bucket, but it's very easy to upload files, delete files, remember the, pa the file path and if there's any nested folders, list the directory to get additional data. The signed URL uh, is super great to generate if you need to do more file storage or secure files uh, to send to people that will expire after a certain amount of time. And then of course, uh, create a var from file resource allows us to work with those images in our Xano function stack. So thanks for watching. Very excited about this new functionality. Uh, I think it's going to unlock, unlock a lot of very cool file intensive use cases by leveraging the Google Cloud Storage uh, solution. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.